Hi, Dan Harley here, and I put this video together together to essentially help of my fellow citizens in Apple Valley. Uh, can I better understand what's going on with Measure F? And uh, I told a friend of mine several years ago, who's a former mayor of Apple Valley, that it is uh, easy to lie, but uh, much more difficult to explain the truth. And today I'm going to try to explain the truth, some of the truth about Measure F. What's right, what's right or wrong about Measure F, okay? The uh, reason why I got involved with this is, in this video, is I had an elevated discussion recently about Measure F online and uh, realized lots of people, lots of information, misinformation out there or no information on critical issues. Lots of people very confused. Obviously, lots of people, emotions are involved with this. So I'm going to try to explain the truth as best as I can. There's lots of details that both sides are basically living, leaving out of their political ads. And my little video here is going to be a lot longer than the 30 second soundbite from either side. So um, I'm going to cover a lot of stuff here. You know, who I think will, like, such as who I think will win Measure F? Uh, how do we get in this big mess? Uh, who will like, what will like to happen with Town of Valley if they acquire the system? Uh, why your water bill is so high? How to reduce your water bill right now? And a better way to acquire Liberty's water grid. Uh, some quick disclaimers here. First and foremost, I'm not getting paid or supported by either side of Measure F. This is about for my own effort and my own cost. In fact, it cost me over two days worth of work so far, and I appreciate if everybody kind of respects that. And I also re remain officially neutral to Measure F until fairly recently, okay? Obviously, I'm going to have an opinion here. Now, I've had good friends on both sides of F, all right? I have uh, many of us earn Rotary together, and... Um, Literally, when we go to Rotary meetings, there's pro and against folks sitting in the same table. And in fact, it's uh, it's got so tension, got so so a little bit tight in there. I kind of avoided going to Rotary because of Measure F. And uh, I've also been personally invited to support from both sides, and I'm I'm honored. Okay, but like I said, I kind of refrain and remain officially neutral. I also anticipate, I hope my friends would, um, and colleagues would res, res, respect my opinion. And I'm going to apologize in advance now in case I hurt anybody's feelings. So, now, um, more of why I'm doing this. I think there's lots of misinformation out there. Both sides aren't really providing the entire picture. Uh, a lot of, and only covering really key emotional points. And part of the reason why I see a lot of people really get emotional about this whole thing. And there's numerous important issues that really too too complex to cover in 30 seconds, and it, because of that, I think the public public is coming to wrong conclusions of what what which one's right on this. So, I think the public needs to be aware of the facts. You know, I want to provide a bigger picture for everyone to see that if this is going to take a take a long time to 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 do. Okay, this acquisition it's going to become a legal mess. And it will certainly affect the functionality of Tampa Apple Valley. And I don't think anyone will doubt this, that they took a step back and seen the facts for themselves. Okay, now, um, why I think I know what I'm talking about, what, what makes me the smarty pants here? Um, first of all, I'm a lifelong resident of Apple Valley, born and raised here, and uh, born in St. Mary's Hospital. I've also been a water industry for quite a long time. My family designed... Uh, over 30 years, my family and I designed, manufactured, and installed SCADA systems right here in Apple Valley, of all things. And we had over 20, over two dozen water utilities as clients, including Apple Valley Ranches as, and at the time, Apple Valley Water District. Uh, we interfaced with hundreds of water, back uh, I interfaced with hundreds of water utilities and municipalities across the country. I made hundreds of sales calls. I've been affiliated with AWWA, ARWA, and other industry associations. And I have at least a better than average knowledge of water systems than probably the, the, the public here. So now my knowledge is also limited too. Uh, lots of things I don't know that's going on, such as specific costs of Liberty System, what town has put in to to acquire the system, so forth. Also any backroom deals that's going on. So. I am doing everything the best to my knowledge. So my initial reaction to Measure F is, frankly, I thought it was a joke. Okay. Uh, we just went through a brutal general election with Trump and Hillary Clinton, and all as well as a lot of uh, state and local issues. It was very emotional, 
the most the, the craziest election I've ever experienced in my life. All right. Also, around the same time, Claremont, City of Claremont, <clears throat> lost a major court decision that cost over the cost that that said over fourteen million dollars in legal fees. They basically uh, essentially tried to do what Town Apple is doing and lost. Um, I thought that Town Apple should consider regrouping. Examine why Claremont lost. Strengthen town, strengthen the town Applebee's function uh, foundation for their 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 request acquisition. Better edu- educate the pu- the public and be ready for next election cycle. Cycle. But instead, uh, town Applebee's decided to spend two hundred twenty million, two hundred twenty thousand dollars on a special election, and they believe this is a do or die moment for their cause. Um, <clears throat> my position is. I believe, believe it or not, I believe Literary's water grid should be owned and operated as a public utility. I do not believe that the approach the town of Apple Valley is taken to be prudent. Uh, it's going to be uh, a nasty lawsuit is inevitable, and only thing, and from that, only thing, only people are going to win are the lawyers. They're the only ones going to win here, and there's certainly going to be losers. It could either be the customers and or the citizens of town of Apple Valley. They're going to be the losers, no matter who's who claims to be winning here. Okay, <clears throat> and also, you know, let's talk about right now. Who do I think will will win Measure F? As I really don't know. There's so much misinformation for both sides out there. The public is certainly confused and scared that we're doomed. We don't do something or the other, and uh, this is very concerning to to me, regardless of who wins. So I thought. First of all, as we go through this journey here, I, I bring up the history of how we kind of got there, how we got in this mess. All right. So I think it's important to know this history because it likely become come up in legal battles between Town Apple Valley and Liberty, and will certainly affect Town Apple Valley's claim of of being capable of running of operating a water utility. Now, this is as best as I can remember, accurate and only accurate to my best recollection. This is over several decades of what's going on. So I'm sure someone out there is going to correct the details, but still, this is still important information for the for everybody to know. <clears throat> First of all, I think, I'm sure everybody knows that Apple Ranchos was a private water company, which is essentially what Liberty Utility is now. Uh, they were cre- created to build homes in Apple Valley, and the cost of operating that water company was offset by land and, land developments and sales. All right, that's why water back in the 60s and 70s, I have a lot of people claiming, well, my water bill was only 20 bucks a month for 30 bucks a month back in the 60s and 70s, just because it was offset by by ranchos being a part of a bigger company. Okay, um, now New Bass, who was a co-founder of of, of Apple Valley. Uh, part of his assets were were part of Getty Oil. When he passed away, Getty acquired Rancho Apple Ranchos, and then Texaco bought Getty, and then Texaco split and sold off Apple Ranchos assets. Now Apple Country Club became separate. Apple N became separate. The Apple Real Estate Company became separate. And Apple Water Company became separate. So Apple Water was on its own as a private water company. So um, now shortly after that, Apple I, Ranchos almost failed. Uh, they had years of stagnation. Uh, infrastructure was falling apart and not keep up with demand. Water levels, it was so bad that water levels, water pressure was at dangerously low levels. Uh, the wells and the entire system was running 24-7 during the summer. Pressure levels were barely getting above fire flow. And the end of the water system would come any one of those wells would fail because it, it, be, it would mean we could, weren't able to catch up. And um, it got to the point that Jack Clark, who was the manager of Apple Valley Ranchos at the time, um, asked several entities to to um, take over Apple Valley Ranchos, including Apple Valley Water District at the time, which was the precursor to the town of Apple Valley. We're going to talk about that a little bit in, in just a short form in here. But nobody won Apple Valley Ranchos. So Park Water purchased Apple Valley Ranchos. The first thing they did was immediately spend $10 million on infrastructure just to keep the system going. And they kept on investing in, App, in Apple Valley until um, until that until sold to, to Carlisle. Now I mentioned that Town of Apple Valley had a water department. <clears throat> they acquired Apple Valley Water District, if I'm correct, that that's, that the, that was the name. They had a grid just north of Apple Valley Airport. Um, they had um, a lot of storage there. They had two reservoirs, 
2.4 million gallons. One that was on Bell Mountain. If you ever go down Dale Evans uh, Drive there towards Interstate 15, you see off to the east there or west there, you see Bell Mountain tank. <clears throat> Another tank on Starter Wells far to the north. Um, they had a 1,200 gallon per minute, a very high production well that is located close to AAE campus and a booster station. Now, all this equipment out there service less than 12 customers. If I correct about 12 customers, something like that. And um, the pretest of all this was created to serve a future growth in North Apple Valley. They expect to have houses and, and businesses out there, basically, essentially, another Apple Valley out that way. But never did happen. <clears throat> so, now, also, Apple Valley Ranches was one of several water systems in Apple Valley. Um, there's several smaller water systems that serve track homes, tracks of homes in various parts of Apple Valley. And park at Apple Valley Ranchos start purchasing quite these systems, most of these systems until we have what we have today. Um, also, Town Apple Valley is still not the only water utility in Town Apple Ranchos. It's still not the only um, utility in Town Apple Valley. We still have Golden State Water, and we have smell of small, several smaller grids in or near Town Apple Valley. Uh, and also got several private water consumers with their own wells. <clears throat> so, now, in the same time when Park and ranchers were acquiring these smaller systems, Town Apple Valley Water Department essentially remained the same. They did not expand, um, which was became a very expensive department. Okay, they had personnel, equipment, and energy to maintain a very a, a rather large system for only twelve customers. So. Like I say, they're waiting for development that never, still hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> now, believe it or not, um, Town of Apple Valley Ranch is the Town of Apple Valley swap systems. Because one thing that Town of Apple Valley did have was they were building a uh, a secondary, a sewer system, uh, a sewer department. All right. So, Apple Valley Ranch has acquired Jess Ranch as one of the acquisitions of smaller water systems. And they also acquired uh, their. Their, uh, their their stations and their sewer pipes, and um, Todd Apple had a sewer grid, so they swapped, the, like better terms, the water uh, Town Apple's water system for uh, Jess Ranch's sewer system, and now at the time this is a good thing, okay, because there this is during decades of cooperation between Apple Ranches and Town Apple Valley, so everybody was getting along, all right. Now this blue ribbon panel came wrong and hired by Town Apple Valley to determine the future of how things should happen in town. Um, they did suggest Apple Valley Ranches should eventually become a public utility, but a public utility, but never did say how. Okay. <clears throat> also, um, shortly after that, Scott Weldy, uh, who's the general manager after Jack Clark, he suddenly passed away. And around that time is where the decades cooperation between Apple Valley Ranchos and Town Apple Valley seemed to have like ended. I'm not sure specifically because Scott Scott was the linchpin behind this or what or what, but see like about that time things started going downhill. So um, also, Park Water got sold to Carlisle Investments, which in my opinion is an evil company, and I was very concerned, and uh, which. Uh, even for me, I thought Town of Apple should acquire the acquisition of AV uh, Apple Valley Ranches was prudent for Town of Apple to do. Um, also, we had an extended drought. If you recall, we just came out of a drought. Jerry Brown mandated fines on water hogs. And <clears throat> quite frankly, Apple Valley Ranches Carlisle just missed, completely mishandled all that. Um, they had residents getting fined even after reducing usage. 10, 23 percent, still getting fined as water hogs, <clears throat> and they and they massively screwed up, and the Town of Apple Valley, as well as the citizens, went nuts and for good reason, okay, and then somewhere down the line, Apple Valley and the old park systems were sold to Liberty Utilities. Liberty was left, was left to deal with the massive political mess from Carlisle. <clears throat> now, all the stuff I mentioned, okay, uh, I know the details are probably a little bit. Shady gray area, but three important things come out of this out, out of this history here. Town of Apple Valley's private water utilities is for decades of stagnation by the town of Apple Valley. They essentially done nothing with their water system in expanding it for decades. In fact, they had a water system. They no longer have a water system. 
Okay, that is now part of Apple Valley Ranch's grid. Also, Apple Valley Ranch's and Town of Apple Valley used to get along. So these three things I think is going to be really important to know when uh, when Town of Apple Valley faces acquire Liberty's grid in, in court or in, in the legal battles here. <clears throat> now, let's talk what's supposed to happen if Town of Apple Valley takes over the system. You hear a lot of hearsay, hearsay. Here saying, well, we're going to do this, that, the other thing. It really comes down to two things, okay? Town of Apple wants to stabilize and reduce, and reduce your water rates, and they think it's important for local control. And I agree. Fundamentally, I agree that these are important things. But let's really break down if this is actually going to happen. First of all, well, Town of Apple, Town of Apple lower your rates. I have over 30 years' experience in, this, in, in, this, in, in, in the water industry. I've never seen rates roll back, ever. I've seen, I, I've seen a, um, a, a, a quick um, one time where um, there was a rebate back to some customers in a water system, but never have I seen rates roll back, okay? And in fact, I, I've seen, based on what I've seen on these acquisitions, that it's very likely rates will rise due to unforeseen expenses. And what it's seeing right now, the unforeseen expense is probably going to be massive legal bills. So, also historically, private utilities usually win these legal battles, as you, as we noticed in Claremont. And municipalities end up having to pay the legal fees. So, and that's really why Liberty essentially doesn't care how much it costs, because they win either way. If they, they if they win legal in the in in the court. They get their legal bills paid. They don't win in court. Then Town Apple pays millions, millions to Liberty for their water grid. So they win no matter what. So either way, it's going to be very expensive, from my pers perspective, for Town Apple Valley to acquire the system. And it's very hard for me to justify any cost savings that Town Apple Valley says claims they're going to have. <clears throat> now. I gotta say here too. I'm gonna bring up their little thing here, their little, um, th their pamphlet here. They're not saying they're gonna reduce or lower rates. They're suggesting, okay, and um, they're su doing the suggestion without any out without any proof that they're actually gonna be able to do it. Okay, they even admit it in their own political flyer here. Okay, they, re they that they said they're gonna require a rate study because of Prop 218. Okay, in my opinion, if Town Apple says they're going to even suggest this, they should definitely prove that their position, their position with water rates. They need examples of where municipalities have successfully transitioned, and rates were reduced. Very simple. They don't have to go some doctor, some some guy with a PhD. Just bring up some examples of, of how this is how this has been successful. I personally have not seen it. I might be wrong. I'll leave that out there. Okay. Next thing here is, will appliances have more control, more control over their utility? Well, yes, but also it's more like control is going to go from one bureaucracy to another bureaucracy. And I'm giving you an example of uh, something that happened fairly recent. Irvine Ranch Water District and LEDWP raised their rates despite public outcry. Uh, in that last drought here, the Jerry Brown situation, the Jerry Brown drought, situ drought situation, typical drought situation in, in, the, in, in, in the water industry. The utility says, save water. So the public saves water. But all of a sudden, they're not selling enough water, and which creates a cash flow for the water system. So they turn around and raise the rates. This happens almost all the time. <laughs> so, um, in fact... In, in, in this past drought situation, it only took Irvine Ranch and any LADWP less than 30 days to make the decision to raise the rates. And even John and Ken of KFI, who were notorious renowned for backing the public and going after these folks, these, these, these government folks, for doing what they did, they backed off too. So, now, on the other hand, private utilities have to wait three years for, to do a rate increase, even though it's substantial when they do it, okay? They got to face, face the PUC. When they do the rate, rate, rate increase, they got to face the PUC, they got to face the public, and they got to face the town council in our in our situation, who threatens and condemns to take over the water system. So, 
we really have a, as a pub uh, as we sit right now we actually have lots of control in the public that's that we are really not aware that we have okay now let's go a step further here why is your bill so high and a lot of you folks out there and I'll give you an example here um, in one of my heated debates online here I got a father complaint about his uh, $400 water bill and that's the reason why he's supporting measure F in fact a lot of people that are supporting measure F have the same situation they have a, a lot of uh, irrigation lawns lawns stuff like that they're paying a hundreds of dollars a month for 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 water so I asked him simply do they have a lawn he said yes <clears throat> so I told him that well that's why you have a high water bill and um, he turns around justifies he needs that he needs that lawn okay and he needs it for his kids and I'm the bad guy for not thinking he's a lawn uh, once again this is common thinking of those who voting in favor of measure F or voting in favor of thinking that the town apple valley is somehow somewhere going to lower the water bill so they can have pay 70 bucks a month for a huge lawn it's just simply not going to happen okay now i'm going to step forward here liberty does charge a lot for their services a lot more than they should from my opinion okay but it's not for the services that everybody thinks okay um what people don't people don't lots of folks don't realize is private utilities private water companies <clears throat> make money only from selling water they don't make money. They cannot collect property taxes or assessment taxes or the liking to offset their bill. So even town and Valley staff admit they cannot accurately assess the offset of cost of property taxes and assessment taxes and other taxes until they take over the water utilities. So they even, even they don't know how much they can save or not save or if it's going to be offset, whatever. They don't even know. Now, let's talk about major expensive water utility, regardless of whether it's private or public. Generally, three big things, okay? Personnel, energy, capital equipment, okay? I'm going to break, briefly break down these things here. In personnel, there's usually uh, special certifications to operate a water company, a water utility. And um, while well, Teal's town of Apple Valley will very likely have to hire a substantial amount of Liberty staff to maintain the system. So the reason, reason why I brought that up, I don't think personnel is going to be a major savings for for uh, 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 over Liberty for Town of Apple Valley. This is probably going to be a wash. Energy, it's a huge thing. Projection wells use cost billions of dollars a, a, a year to operate uh, just off the electric bill. The challenge here is Liberty is already conserving have the best rates by using off-peak pumping um the tou off-peak pumping um rates which part of the reason why i do have my skater system here so there's really no significant savings if if liberty's grid became a public utility there capital equipment <clears throat> reservoirs wells mains that's what capital equipment is um there's cost to maintain them there's cost to improve the system this is where public utilities could show a savings here because what they do they'll disperse the cost into taxes and assessments and um where you really don't see your bill okay but you do you somehow some way it's paid but it might not be paid by uh, a resident it might be paid by a a business or a tax somewhere so arguably that is probably someplace where there's be some substantial savings so anyway regardless of all these things here personnel energy capital equipment one thing's for certain all these expenses go up they always 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 go up okay now unless town Apple Valley has some type of magic wand that's gonna that's gonna make these go down these are gonna go up and so will your bill so will your water bill in the future regardless of being owned by Liberty or town Apple Valley <clears throat> now that in mind since we have no choice but to deal with a high water bill, I think it would be I thought it would be prudent to talk about how you can reduce your water bill right now. Okay? Uh, in fact, I'll tell you something here. My liberty bill is only ninety dollars a month. And I got fruit trees, I have a garden, I have grapevines, I have chickens and horse, and I like taking long showers. <clears throat> now, one thing I did is I get rid of my lawn when 
it'll start cost over $300 a month to water it. Do I miss my lawn? Oh, absolutely. I love my lawn. I love taking care of it. I I love making that little the pattern in in in, in the in the grass make it look like it was a major league um, in infield. I loved it, but it was impractical to keep it alive, especially since we live in the desert. So that's the big thing. You have to remember that you live in a desert. Okay, anything that does not grow naturally here in the desert will cost a lot to keep it alive. So putting it bluntly, put it squarely, how you um, save a lot of money, all, all your water bill, you kill your lawn, for lack of better terms. That's the highest, lawns are known for the highest non-essential consumption of potable water, period. Okay, that's why most people complain about high water bills. Very likely, if you have a lawn, you're going to have a high water bill. Okay, also kill anything that's not drought tolerant. Any exotic trees or greenery. Um, they also, and they also eat non-domesticated shrubs. They also suck up a lot of water, okay? Now, killing um, green, your lawn also is not all the whole picture, okay? You also should use water conservation devices such as low flow spigots, uh, shower heads, low flow shower heads, uh, which frankly, uh, here's something interesting. They come free from liberty. They have a policy, a policy they have to tell you to, to save water. So also use, um, and they have these, these devices available. Also use drip, drip irrigation system. That's the reason why we got our, our our garden and we can keep it cheap. And a gray water system. Okay, where basically well, this is why I have my fruit trees. I have um, water from my from my washer pumped out to my fruit trees. Works right. Costs nothing. And um, another thing a lot of people don't realize is after all this, they say I still have a high high, high water bill. Is to check for leaks. All right. Uh, an example with me is. My water bill used to be about 120, 150 bucks a month, which I thought was reasonable, but I didn't realize there was a leak. Okay, then I did I did a, a system check and found out I had, a, I had a, a leaky irrigation pipe, and I fixed that and reduced my water bill by over 30 percent while still keeping my plants and out and all this stuff. So, <clears throat> what's interesting is um, water utilities, be it Liberty or a public utility, will perform these leaks these tests these leak tests usually for free. So consider that. Now, I want to get into um, all that stuff here. Up until now, I've been kind of picking on Town Apple Valley and how wrong they are. Okay, I'm going to start picking on Liberty right now, so we make sure it's kind of equal. All right. Now, um, for my opinion, where did Liberty? Where is Liberty screwing up? Okay, what are they doing wrong? The one big thing I think it, a, a lot a lot of things here, high water bill stuff. They have terrible public relations. Okay, Apple Ranchos had it really easy when Jack Clark and Scott Weldy were alive, because those folks, their home, their their our town folk, our kinship. Uh, we grew up with them. We you know we they're good friends with us. We all love them. We trust them as part of the community. Since they're gone, uh, Apple Ranchos or Liberty is essentially a company that's working in Apple Valley. And um, also, Carlisle did Apple Valley Ranchers no favors at all. Um, they're an evil company, mind you. And they screwed up really big during the, during the drought. Because of their screw up, they turned lots of allies that they had into enemies virtually overnight. A lot of you people that are, are pro-AF um, used to get along with ranchos. Not anymore. Um, and when Liberty took over... They're not Carlisle, but they're acting just like Carlisle. You know, they're they're not engaging with the community like they should, and turning more of the community against them. And frankly, they should be doing this video and not me. So since they're not, I explain uh, my idea how to get rid of labor utilities. So um, <clears throat> this is my take on how to. A better way to acquire Liberty's grid, as I call it. I call it grid because I'm in this industry here. Um, then a few things are about cons um, uh, about acquisition of the systems, and that part is uh, uh, conservation. Anyway, let's talk about acquisition first. Um, I uh, I think that uh, Tan Apple should seriously look into acquiring and consolidating the smaller water systems surrounding top Tan Apple Valley. Um, most of them are barely squeaking by. Um, they would probably just just be love it 
if some, if the, if the like is town apple like come in there and, and take over the system and modernize everything. Um, it would cost much less to do that than uh, try to acquire uh, Apple Valley Ranchos or the Liberty system. And it will also reestablish Town Apple Valley with a water department. All right. Also, uh, acquire Golden State's Grit. And this is the other private water company in Apple Valley. Important thing about Golden State is they have a long history of abandoning their systems. Uh, they brought you Big Bear Lake and Wrightwood and left a big mess behind them. And uh, they will likely submit to acquisition with a lot less pressure than uh, Liberty will. And will be a lot less expensive for uh, than to acquire Apple Valley Ranchers or Liberty system too, okay? Now, these two acquisition ideas I have might not be very realistic because most of their systems are outside the town limits of Apple Valley. But it is still very prudent for discussion amongst the town folks and amongst the community, our community here. So the other part of this thing is reuse, reclaim water and conservation. I'm firm believer of reclaim water. And I think Appley, town Apple should build a reclaim water distribution system. This is the future of water utilities is using reclaim water. Okay, it should, should have been done 20 years ago and we're way, way behind in my opinion. Okay, Brewster Park is, the reclaimed water plant over there is a pot of gold for the town of Apple Valley. And they should provide, and they should use that reclaimed water from there to provide to the largest, largest of Liberty's water users. The parks, the schools, the shopping centers, the churches, the large residential lots, new development, use that to, to as uh, let's say the solar panels of water systems here uh example how this works really well is i have a client I had a client desert water agency in palm springs they're basically water palm springs water company um they have a system a secondary treatment plant similar to brewster park system where they take secondary water and redistribute uh, clean it and redistribute it they distribute the golf courses around the area they charge less than for potable water and leave certain things like nitrogen, other things in, in the element for the water. So, uh, so they're, they're less need to fertilize the grass. So that makes the customer love what they're doing. They have used, they, they uh, pay less for water, use less water, use less fertilizer for the grass. The grass grows like crazy. They love it. They'll build up so much that the uh, desert water agency acquired the city's wastewater plant to keep up with the demand here. And it would, there's no reason, I'd love to see it over here. So now, now this would, now the, the reclaimed water will only work for where we can run reclaimed water system to. Okay, there's a, a, a lot more of the town, a lot more of this, uh, the town here that probably will never get reclaimed water. Then we had to look at ramping up water conservation programs. We uh, want to maintain new construction, uh, mandate that all new construction uh, has a great water system installed or use reclaimed as irrigation for their, for, their, for their lot, okay? Also, we offer discount rebates to homeowners to install great water or use reclaimed water for, uh, for their irrigation. For the, and and uh, here's something interesting. Liberty has to comply with these conservation efforts. They're actually spending money to tell us not to spend, not to, <laughs> not to uh, use so much water. They're spending money on what Tata Apple should be doing themselves. All right. Now, using reclaimed and using water conservation, what this does, it takes away Liberty's revenue. Okay. He starts with switching the largest, the largest users, water users, to reclaim water. The rest of the community starts on, on, on a water conservation program. You start use, reducing potable water construction, and that drives um, that drives Liberty's business model become unsustainable. You start squeezing a water company at 5, 10, 20%, it's going to hurt them. If you don't believe me, ask Liberty. They will tell you. Okay? I also believe that uh, towns should continue legal pressure on Liberty, fight them at the PUC, Fight them in the ballot box, keep them in the public eye. And um, also, 
All the stuff we're suggesting certainly needs a lot more planning. This is my idea, one man trying to come up with this, okay? But I also don't believe that these ideas were given much thought by Town Apple Valley, especially after my recent conversations, okay? Um, I believe this public needs to know that there are many more options available, okay? And that in mind, that means Measure F is not the final battle to all this. I mean, it took years for the town of Apple Valley to get the situation. It's going to take years to get out of it. Okay? And also, town of Apple Valley cannot afford to make these mis any more mistakes because it's going to be very expensive to the consumers and the citizens of Apple Valley. I want to remind the folks in Apple Valley that Apple Fire Department took many elections, many years, to pass the fire tax before they finally won. But they finally did win. Okay, it is possible, it is feasible, it's not the end of the world if Measure F fails. <clears throat> well, that comes down to a probably good question, and probably everybody probably already knows how am I voting on F and Y? Some things are pretty obvious, some things are not so obvious, which I want to cover now. I'm going to vote no on F. The reason why is I'm concerned about allowing the town of Apple as being stewards of 150 million dollars. They'd have no realistic plan how they would better be better serving this community than Liberty. And we don't know who's going to lead this town here, who's going to manage or lead the town of Apple Valley. Frank Robinson, the current town manager, he's retiring this summer. Also, town councils, they change every two years. You don't know who's going to be out, out here in two years from now. <clears throat> and this is going to take years to complete the acquisition. So who are we supposed to uh, uh, trust with $150 million? So, I really want to see Liberty's Grid become a public utility, but the town of Apple needs to prove that they can do it. And there is a path where they can demonstrate the ability without obligating citizens to $150 million at this time. <clears throat> now, um, regardless of my opinion of Measure F, I think of the outcome of it, okay? I don't, actually, I don't, one way or the other, if it, it, it wins or loses, it's okay. Town of Apple needs to be more aggressive with reclaimed water distribution and water conservation. This is going to just something we just need to do as a community. Okay, they're missing out on tremendous opportunities if they continue continue to be complacent about this. They have to go forward with this. Okay. Also, they need to bring it bring to light acquisition of Gold State and the neighboring grids to the forefront here, because uh, this is something they need to do just merely as experience and also as to benefit this community in other ways. There's, there's some of these, there's parts of Apple Valley that's, that do not have the luxury of being at liberty and not have to worry about um, the water getting cut off because a well goes out or something like that. Um, this is something that town needs to seriously consider. Consider it is part, that citizens are still not part of, uh, who are, who are, the, there's, town of Apple Valley has citizens who are, do not, are not necessarily Liberty's customers. So, now, one last thing, not really last thing here, but ultimately here, the best thing that really can happen to this whole thing, okay, is if Town Apple Valley and Liberty become friends again, um, revert back to better times where they work to they work together, they work to better the serve to serve the community, and uh, everything was peaceful. But I am afraid that bridge is probably burned. And um, really, it comes down to Liberty to figure this out, all right? I, I think Liberty needs to be engaged, better engaged to be a part of this community. They need to do better PR. They need to reach out to town Apple Valley. They need to reach out to the community. They need, they need to earn community trust back like they had before as Apple Valley Ranchos. And until then, even afterwards, town Apple Valley has an obligation, has a duty to challenge liberty on behalf of the citizens. <clears throat> now, a question should go back to you folks out there. Should you vote for Measure F? And I'm gonna, a question I get toss out at you, okay? Do you trust Town Council and Town Apple Valley to, to staff to steward $150 million who will have a new town manager whose council only has one member of the five who's had any experience in the water industry? whose council may change in any election, whose town staff is zero for one with operating water utility. I really want to trust 
town council, the current manager, but they aren't the issue. It's the unknown future I don't trust. And I don't want Apple, I don't want Apple's version of Jared Brown's high speed train to happen here. But friendly, it's a great idea to take over the, the, the Liberty's water Liberty water and, and turn uh, that into a public utility. But in the meantime, this this great idea just destroyed by government and political bureaucracy. Um, in conclusion, the journey, I hope to prove here, the journey to acquire Liberty system is far, far from over. There's still, still options, uh, still, several options still open. Uh, if F loses, then Top of Life should still continue on, keep on moving forward, but do it smart. Okay? There's also many things us individuals can do in the meantime. We could become more water conscious. We could press town app budget on expanding the reclaimed water system and be vocal with liberty about their service and community involvement. Okay, and I hope ultimately this information I provide in the video, it's going to be provide it, it's going to be beneficial for everyone to consider, regardless of your position of, 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 on F. In conclusion, um. I'm going to do my best to respond to any questions or comments that you folks might have out there. But please be patient. I'm a one-man operation, and I'm not going to get paid or supported by either side of this. This is me doing this. So, Anyway, um, I want to thank you folks for your time and concern all this. I know this is a very emotional election, and I hope everybody respects it, each other at the end, that we're all... Uh, neighbors and friends and we stay that way regardless of our position here and um, I uh, pray that we no matter what happens it turns out for the best for this community so God bless you all we'll talk to you later